So, winter's nearly here. It's getting cold. Some people won't be using the motorhome. Some people might be using the motorhome. But because we're getting up to this time of year now, October time, November time, the weather's starting to change. It's starting to get miserable. Um, we're going to soon start be getting frost and cold. So there's probably a few things to do to your motorhome to lay it up if you're not going to be using it, or even if you're using it now and again. So the first thing we're going to start off with is the engine. So a good tip on the engine side is to check all your levels so just checking basically your brakes your power steering your oil light levels but one of the most important well there's two important ones there kevin they really yeah. to do one is checking your water level and then also checking that you've got sufficient antifreeze in where have you put the little tool Use the little tool. <laughs> oh, where's it gone? Where's the little tool gone, Kev? Go on, Jason, have you found your little tool? Yeah, it just took me that long to find my little tool. The big van that was here has now shrunk to on that van. And the reason being, some plonker didn't switch record on when we did the last part of the filming, yeah, which yeah, was you. Yeah. <laughs> so I have two little tools. So what were we on about? I always lose his tools. <laughs> So yeah, um, make sure the fresh air, the water's um, topped up, and then you can check the strength of your um, antifreeze. antifreeze basically by using one of them. You suck the water up there, and then the little can you see that? So if there's three of them, then it'll do minus five to twenty-one. If there's four, minus twenty-six to minus thirty-two. So quite an easy thing to use. Uh, also, make sure the scuttle, especially on the older vans, Kevin, to make sure yeah. the scuttles are all clean. Yeah, because uh, of the drain uh, and some of them you've got to check that the, the pipe's still on. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, Ash, because you know, sometimes pipes, the pipe disconnects, we? yeah, and it pours all over and it'll get on the injectors. Yeah. And then you've got serious trouble if you need to get an injector. Out. And especially with band pre-2001, make sure there's yeah. no leaves on the scuttle because the water will drip over and drops onto the gearbox as well. So there's something else for you. Um, if you're not using the van, try and give her a run once a week if you can. Yeah. Um, About a 20 mile round trip. Yeah, yeah, 10 miles. Just, just give it, just give it a good run. Um, anything else you can think of around the van, Kev? Checking seals. Just check seals. I mean, what you may find that if you had a really hot summer, you could find some of the sealant oozing out. Yeah. You know, uh, that could be trimmed off with a credit card. A credit card. Yeah, credit card's quite good. Yeah. Yeah, but just generally just going any, around. Any plastic just card. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, you wouldn't give it a good clean. We mentioned giving it a good clean, didn't we? Yeah. Give it a good clean, good wash off. Um, what you could also do as well is chop the wheel. Yeah, chop one wheel. Chop one wheel. The reason why we do that so it's got a run off for the water. So it doesn't puddle on the roof. And it doesn't puddle. And especially in winter time, it doesn't freeze in and get underneath the seals any water. Yeah. That's puddling. Puddling. Mm. Oh, well, if it's weird. freezing and then melting and freezing and melting, it's not doing the seals any good. So. Yeah. Um, anything to do with the cassette toilet? Cassette what toilet, we can do? yeah. yeah. We've actually got the cassette out. We've got this one out here. It Give it another clean, won't we? Uh, silicon oh. around the seal. Silicon around the seals? The seal dries up and uh, what you will get, you get some overspill and you'll end up with a smelly cassette compartment. Yeah, so we'll just give that a rinse off. We'll give it a good clean out as well, haven't we? Yeah, so. a good clean out. Uh, but I will check it later because Kevin's yeah. cleaned it out. Mm. Um, anything else we can go around? Just, just general, <laughs> general chat, isn't it? Really? Yeah. That, that's really outside, Kevin, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right. What we'll do then? We'll go inside now and carry on. <laughs> right inside the van, Kevin. I think the most important one when it comes down to is your water, isn't it? Yeah. Main, 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 main one. So your first one is your water heater, drain down the water heater, and you drain off your water heaters, nine times out of 10, it's by the water heater. Yeah. Yeah, so let's just go and have a look at you, that. Usually, on some vans, it's a yellow tab, which I think it is on this one. You should be getting in here, Kev. So, as you can see down there, there's the water heater. If we lift that up, I'll just show you actually, lift that up. That drains the water out. So there we are. There's the water heater. That's drained so all the water. When you do drain it, you'd leave that tab up. 
Um, you can either leave it up or wait till it's fully drained and then put it back down again because it might stop any creepy crawlers from getting up the pipe. Yeah, true. You see, you have to think about these things, Kevin. And there's our water pump. Now you can, uh, which we will show you in a minute, if you want to, you could disconnect either side. Yeah. Basically disconnect it. Um, so any little bit of water will come out of there. Base, and then we're not getting the uh, water pump frozen up. Yeah. So what we are going to do as well is now we really need all the water out the pipes. Basically, so we drain everything down, make sure everything's drained down. Then we, we keep pulsing the pump, won't we? Yeah. Put the pump on. That's a sure flow pump. You won't harm it if, it's, if you're running it dry, will you, Kevin? No. Nope. But any little bits in the pipe, basically just keep running it on, get you through any water. And then once it is fully drained, leave the tap open in the mid position. In the mid position. It's important you leave it open because any water that's held in there will split the tap. And then we're going to do exactly the same in the bathroom. Yep. And then we'll also, if we have a shower, we'll do the shower. Drop the shower head into the tray. You beat me to it, Kevin. Yep. We will put the shower area, shower it down. Because if it's hanging up like that, look, we're creating a a water trap. A water trap. So by pulling it all the way down, everything's going down, isn't it? Yeah. And also flush the toilet. Why do we flush the toilet, Kevin? Any water that's sat in the flush. We flush through? Yeah. Good point, that is. But that's yeah. only if it's operated by the pump. Yeah. Yeah. If it isn't, um, it's a separate operated, water tank. It's a separate water tank. We're going to drain out everything out of the cassette toilet as well. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. So we've now drained all the water down. What's the next thing we're going to do, Kevin? Would we be leaving the um, fridge open? The, the fridge and the freezer open, yeah. Fridge open. Freezer? Freezer. Yep. Yep. I'd also leave all cupboard doors open. All the cupboard doors open? All the cupboard doors. That allows air to circulate. Right. Uh, you've got to remember, behind this cupboard door is the outside wall of the room. Correct. So if you open that, that there is the outside wall. So it's going to create a cold zone. If those cupboards are open, you've got the same temperature throughout the van. So you'd leave them all open. I'm opening them. You're opening yep. them, yeah. Anything we're going to do with the cushions? Cushions, I've moved the back cushion away from the wall. Uh, a lot do have a spacer behind them anyway, like that one's got a spacer behind it. So the, the cushion's not actually touching the back wall. But again, it gives you air circulation. So here's a question for you, Kevin, my little friend. Would we lift the cushion up here for let that breathe? I would, yeah. yeah. Can you show people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can yeah. let it all breathe under there, because again, you've got outside temperature. Yep. So, we've drained the water down. Yep. Got to make sure all the water out of the pipes, we've left the fridge open, the we've, freezer we've open. We've drained the main tank. We've drained the main tank, we've drained the waste tank, we've checked the fluids in the, under the engine, we've given the van a good wash off, we've put a winter cover on a water heater, we've covered and opened all the cupboards. Um, anything else you can think of? Some people ask about putting heat into the van over the winter. Uh, a, little, now, um, a little heater. Oil filled? Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, we have how many vans here, Jason? Roughly 30, 35 vans. Yeah. Do we put heat in them over the winter? No, we don't, do we? Do we? No. And you'll find that all your other dealers don't put heat in the van. Heat creates condensation. Condensation creates mould. Moving on to the drop-down beds. Drop-down bed. If you've drop got a drop-down bed... Drop it down to create circulation through yeah. the drop-down bed. Otherwise, the mattress is touching a coal ceiling and you will get mould on the mattress. And especially if you do walk into the van once a week, we're bringing warm air into there, aren't we? Yeah. Basically. So, what about... about... Vermin. Vermin. Depending on where you park, I mean, some people keep them on farms, uh, some people live in quite a rural area with fields around. You do get the, uh, the little mice, tensors, like living in motorhomes. Uh, they will nest under the bonnet. There's various things you can use. I mean, I tend to, I mean, where I keep mine, I put J's fluid around the, around the wheels. That stops the little critters climbing up the wheels. How often do you do that? I got some Hessian, some squares of Hessian. So I marked out where my wheels were, very technical is. And you're, then you're retired. Drove, yeah, right. yeah, too much time on drive the, the van, drive, the van, drive the van forward, 
put some Hesse in there, watering can with some J fluid on the Hesse, back your van onto it, they're not going to climb up your wheels. Another good thing... How about this then Kevin? Here's one for you. If it's got to be parked up for a while, what about actually moving so that moving the tyres so the tyres yeah, so aren't rotate, in the same so spot? They rotate. So I mean, they rotate them. I mean, they are, there should be camper tyres anyway, which has got a stronger sidewall. Uh, but again, you know, if they're standing, but you, if you're going to take it for a run every now and again, then obviously you're going to back it up in a different way. You could put a chalk mark on your tyre if you're that inclined to make sure they're definitely not in the same place. The other thing is your engine compartment. A good a good thing to spray, and you, you can get it on these online shopping things, is peppermint spray. The mice don't like it. Or cheap perfume. I mean, I'm sure you treat your wife to cheap perfume, don't you, Jason? <laughs> you know these that you get on the market, you know? No, 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 no. It's not, not Chanel, it's Channel, isn't it? But yeah, spray some cheap perfume under the in the bonnet compartment or some peppermint oil because they can cause some damage if they start chewing them wires. Is there anything else we can think of? Uh, covers. Winter covers. Putting, winter putting winter a cover covers. on top of a van. That's a lot of people. Some people say, well, I park under a tree, under trees, so I've got to put a cover on. If you're going to put a cover on, make sure the van is absolutely spotless. Otherwise, you're basically putting a big piece of sandpaper on top of your van. Because it starts to move in the wind. Yeah. It's gonna I'm not a great lover of covers, are you? No, they create mildew. Yeah. They, they do create mildew. Uh, it's like no. putting a coat on you, isn't it? It's going to make you warm. Yeah, yeah. Basically, even well, the, we teach to the road. Yeah, even the so-called breathable the ones. You know, the, even the breathable ones. Now, I've never done it. All these vans are sat here in the winter. Uh, we don't have covers on them. Hmm. Uh, I think we've covered everything, haven't we? I think we have. Like just I say, one one important thing that Jason brought up was if it pools on the roof. Chuck a wheel up so it runs off. You've got to run off and then you're not getting a green sort of mould on your roof. It just keeps the roofs cleaner. And it? also it's not yeah. freezing and then melting, freezing, melting, which can then affect your seals. So, so there you go. A uh, few little tips, whether you use them, be there for you. Yeah. Um, just to keep the best out of your motor home. Um, I can't think of anything else, Kevin, can yeah. you? People say about dehumidifiers, I wouldn't recommend one of them. If you put a dehumidifier in no. a van, You'll walk in and you'll find it's got fluke water in it. No. That, that's because you're actually drawing moisture from outside. <laughs> no. I just think move the, move the cushions away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just some basic jobs there for you to do, really, to be honest. Yeah. Um, now we're getting to that time of the year. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe us. And uh, we'll see what else we can waffle about in the next one. Well, let's hope we don't have a really bad winter. Why? It's damn cold here, isn't it, in the winter? It's <laughs> <Just> get cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. see, well, you see you later. See you later.